Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how you can turn a high resolution model like this into a low poly version like this using Mesh Mixer. Let's go. Okay, so I'm going to start off with this Lion HD model from Thingiverse. Uh, so go ahead and download that. I've already reduced the polygon count in this model using a tutorial I showed previously. You can do it straight away with a HD model, but it does have a lot of polygons and so it will be slower. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and use that reduced version here. Once it's imported, give it a spin around, check it all looks as you would expect. And once you're happy, you're going to want to check the rendering mode. If you hold the spacebar, it brings up this menu and you can toggle between this, which is smooth shading and also flat shading. We're going to want to have it in flat shading like this because it will make it easier to determine how it actually looks when we're performing the reduce operation in a minute. So go ahead and select all. That brings up this menu here. You can then edit and reduce the file. For the low poly versions, I find that max deviation works the best as that keeps the model in its original form, it just makes it nice and blocky. You can then adjust the level of deviation you're happy to accept. I find at least one millimeters will start to give a nice low poly look. For this lion, I think it's going to need a bit more, so I've uh, tried one, two, and now three millimeters, which I am happy with. If you make sure the reduction type is shape preserving rather than uniform, you will end up with a model that's closer to the original, whereas the uniform option will give you a more even triangle size. Okay, let's click accept. Check we're happy with how everything looks by giving a little spin again. And once we are, we can go ahead and export the model. That's the export button on the far left and then save it as whatever you want. I'm calling it Lion Low Poly. Then in your slicer, go ahead and import that and have a look at it. You'll see that on this model, it's actually got quite a triangulated base, but it's not kept the base flat, which is going to be a pain when we click print. I'll show you now. And what you'll see is that there's no nice big flat surface area to start the print from. Now, what you could do is just lower the model down and cross over the bed, but I'm going to show you now how you can do a plane cut and chop off that base straight in Mesh Mixer. So make sure you've got Select All done so that you can bring up the Edit menu, then click Plane Cut, and something like this will show up. Using the blue arrow, you can pull the plane up and down, like so, and that little green button in the bottom left, it says S, is the Snap feature. If you make sure that's off, then you'll be able to drag the plane really easily uh, exactly where you, you want it. I find when chopping a model like this, it helps to look at it from underneath so you can see when you've actually chopped off enough to make it completely flat. See here, at this point I can see that I've taken enough of the model off to ensure that the whole base will be flat. So I can go ahead, click accept and voila. That's much nicer and will produce a good print. Can then again export as I did before. And now if I bring this one into the slicer, you'll see it has the nice flat base when I click and show the print preview. There we go. Much better. I'm now going to show you how you can perform the process with a little bit more control on a model where some of the detail actually needs to be preserved. So I'll go ahead, import and replace and choose this model. I'm going to use a Bulbasaur planter here. I've seen lots of these made into low poly versions, so it's a good one to pick. Since this model has loaded in in the wrong orientation, it's probably a good time to show you some of the more of the controls in Mesh Mixer. So if you go across to the edit menu on the far left, you'll be able to transform the model. There's this little origin axis that shows up with the bars around the outside which enable you to rotate the model in each of the planes. The arrows enable you to move the model in each of the planes. Once you've got it positioned how you want, you can then click accept and continue with the process. 
So I've chosen this model as a demonstration piece because there's a few areas that I think will benefit from not being reduced. So we're going to need to select them. We do that by going to select, making sure it's on the brush tool and make the brush a reasonable size so that we can drag across like this and select the triangles. I've sped this up because it takes a little while. You want to go around and select all of the areas where you uh, won't want the model to be reduced. If at any point you go outside the lines, you can always click undo, which is command Z on a Mac or control Z on a Windows PC. I'm also going to do the undersides of the feet here, these little circular sections, because that's where water will drain out of and we don't want these holes being made smaller in the reduction process. By selecting all these areas, it means we will be able to protect them when it comes to doing the reduction. For small detailed sections of parts, it helps to have the brush size really small so you can select triangle by triangle, but for the larger parts, it's handy to save some time with a few other mesh mixer features. You'll see I just turned the symmetry on and have increased the brush size so I can do these eyes really quickly. Having a big brush also helps to capture circles, which is uh, sometimes difficult if you're painting triangle by triangle. You can then lower the brush size and capture some more of that detail. And as you see, the symmetry tool is meaning that everything I do on this one side is happening on the other side. But of course, that's only beneficial if the model has been made with symmetry, which of course this one has. Finally, I'm just gonna do his teeth because why not? So once you've selected all the bits of the model that you don't want to reduce, you're actually going to need to invert the selection. So we go edit, modify and invert. That means all those points you selected are now not part of the reduction process that we're about to perform. All the bits in orange is what's going to be reduced. As we've done previously, we can then go to edit and reduce. And the feature here that you need to take note of is this preserve boundaries. When you've got parts selected and not selected like this, you want to preserve those boundaries so that they actually remain intact after the reduction process. You can then play around with the max deviation to ensure you get the low poly version looking as you want. And for this model, one millimeter looks good. When we click OK, it will then patch back in those sections we have previously protected and we'll end up with the model part low poly and part detailed. See so it's got his eyes, teeth, the roundness of the top and bottom has stayed protected and everywhere else has become nice and low poly. Finally go ahead and export your model ready to print. And we're done. So thanks for watching, I've shown you how you can create a low poly model from an existing high resolution model in Mesh Mixer. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any comments, drop them down below. And as always, please like and subscribe. Cheers.